So a codec is a set of, it's, a, it's basically a set of math, which says I have this information, I have this video, uh, and I'm going to shrink it and make it viewable for average people. Because if you take uncompressed video, it's really big. It would take you weeks to download a movie. So when you download a movie from the internet, you download it and it's encoded using a codec, using compression technology. Most movies that you download from the internet today are in H.264, which is an MPEG standard. And if you want to build software that works with that, you have to pay money to a group called the MPEG LA. It's the MPEG Licensing Association. MPEG stands for Motion Pictures Experts Group. Og Theora is a very similar standard. It uses a different set of math to compress a movie in much the same way uh, that you don't have to pay anybody for and you can build into any software or any device. So just to give you an example of what this would ultimately mean, it means that you, Andy, could build your own set-top box for the television that could download movies off the internet and you would not have to pay the MPEG LA 10 bucks for everyone you sold. Okay, but uh, you said in your panel that it's it's not stable or something, or it's not there yet, or what? Well, you know, Og Theora is in many ways there now. Uh, it's getting built into Firefox, but there are still every codec needs a rich set of tools tools around it to help people use it, um, and the tool set around Og Theora is still being developed. So the problem that we have is if somebody uploads an Og Theora video to us, everything works. But if you upload an MPEG video to us and you want to make it available in Og Theora, it only works like 65, 70% of the time. And we can't offer a feature that only works 65 or 70% of the time. So that has to get better. Okay, and one last question, uh, which we really appreciate you uh, interpreting for us out here is, you know, there, there's a lot of talk about having video integrated into the web browser, but isn't like the Flash Player when you have it integrated into the browser like a web experience? What's the difference? What is this discussion about having uh, video integrated into the web browser? So think about it this way. Images were integrated into the web browser, I don't know, 15 years ago. Um, imagine if every time you viewed an image on the internet, you had to fire up a browser plugin to do it. And when you first got a new browser, you had to go on the web and you had to download a plugin to be able to look at an image. It's kind of silly, right? I mean, it, in what world would this ever be the case? That's the way it is for video right now. And we are now at the point with video, we're right at the cusp of building it into the browser, meaning that it's just part of everything. And it's not controlled by one company. Um, it's open. Um, nobody can say this is the way it's going to work. Um, and it's going to be a very powerful thing, not only for that reason, but also because of what it means in terms of what you can do with that video. When you're working with a plugin, there's an interface between the browser and the plugin, and it, it's very hard to manipulate the video to do different things. But when it's integrated into the browser, you can use JavaScript to work with it and do anything. You could actually write JavaScript. You could basically write HTML to turn the entire video blue. So when do you think uh, we'll see any of this web browser video? Well, you know, Firefox 3.5 with Theora built in uh, is coming out in uh, a couple of weeks. Um, Firefox has about 22% of the global browser market. Uh, we are getting closer, uh, but, you know, honestly, it's going to be years before it's really mainstream, before every browser supports it. And, you know, that's true of any good internet technology. It takes years. Everybody says it's going to happen tomorrow. People expect the internet to go really fast. These things take years.